Hello my name is Joanna. In this tutorial, we'll go through the main features of this service in a quick run through. Every vectorization starts with uploading an image. This can be done by using the upload button or by drag and drop with a mouse. Uploading the image and the first processing steps can take a few seconds depending on the image size and complexity. On the left side is the input view, on the right side is the output view with a preview of the vectorization result. If the preview meets the requirements, it can be downloaded in different file formats using the download button. Different image modes can be selected on the input side. The selection of the image mode suitable for the loaded image is essential for good vectorizations. Depending on which vectorization result is desired, it is easy to switch the mode between clip art with few colors, photos with many colors and grayscale or black and white drawings. For this image with few colors, the clip art mode is well suited. The next important step is to select an appropriate number of colors for this image. The fewer colors selected, the smaller the vector file created and the sharper the individual vector elements will be. However, if too few colors are selected, essential image components may be lost. After changing the number of colors, by moving the mouse over the input image, the image with reduced number of colors can be compared with the original image. For this image, for example, three colors are optimal. On the right side the colors of the vectorization result are shown in the form of color circles. Each of these colors can be switched off and on individually. Only switched on colors are later included in the vector file. For some images, it is a simple way to remove a background color by disabling it. But for this image, turning off the color white would also remove significant parts inside the image. So it is a good idea to use the remove background function here. By using the slider, you can check in the preview if especially the border areas to other colors are faded out correctly. If necessary, the transparency color could also be selected manually, which is not necessary here because the background color was detected automatically. In the preview on the right, we can now confirm that the background has been correctly removed by using the zoom functions. Depending on the desired use of the vector result, different vectorization algorithms are available. The vectorization results differ, for example, in the structure of the color layers. For the currently selected algorithm, you can see in the isometric view that the colors lie on top of each other in separate layers, and the individual vector elements overlap slightly only at the edges. In contrast, the merge algorithm merges vector elements from overlapping color planes to create larger vector elements with a simpler structure that can be more easily edited in an external vector editing program. There are further algorithms available which generate vector elements without overlapping. The order of the color layers can be changed by drag and drop. Here is an example blue as the top color. Depending on the type and structure of an image and the purpose of the vector file, the order of the color layers can strongly influence the quality and appearance of the vector file. Colors can also be sorted by brightness or color using the drop-down menu. Also, different colors can be merged by drag and drop, but in this case, the preview indicates that this is not useful here. By zooming in and moving the mouse, the input and output images can be easily compared and minor inaccuracies in the vector output can be identified. Here the brush tool is used to change the color of individual pixels.
If necessary, this function could also be used to add new image details, such as the inside of this eye. If after checking the preview, the vectorization result meets the requirements, the result can be downloaded in various file formats. SVG is the default format for vector files, but other vector formats such as EPS can also be selected. For some use cases it may also be necessary to download the vector result in a raster file format like PNG. In this case we use the SVG format. If the location of the file to be saved is to be selected manually, right-click on the Download button and select Save As. Next, Let's see how to vectorize an image with transparent pixels. As we can see with this image, different transparency values in the input image may show an unexpected vectorization result in the preview. A simple way to improve the vectorization result is to remove the transparency and replace all transparent pixels with a solid color. Here white. This way we get a vector result with two colors. The white background can now be easily removed or even easier the white color can be turned off. The preview now shows the result. For each color there is now the possibility to adjust it manually. Now to an image that has strong compression artifacts. To avoid these, images should be uploaded in PNG format if possible. However, if an image is only in JPEG format with a high compression level, compression artifacts can make vectorization very difficult. Many random pixels of noise can make the actual structure of the image difficult to analyze and thus often unnecessarily increase the number of colors resulting in an often unnecessarily large vector file. For such images, an attempt can be made to filter out the disturbances automatically. However, this is only possible for images in smaller resolutions, because the process would take too long for large images. For this image, the filtering works very well and there is hardly any unwanted noise left in the input image. For this relatively small image, it is also possible to double the resolution. By removing the noise and enlarging the image, the number of colors can now be reduced and still the essential details are clearly visible in the vector preview. Colors can be merged by drag and drop, which further reduces the number of colors in the vector result. but there is also the possibility to edit the color palette manually. It is also possible to create a new color palette manually. By double-clicking on a color, it is added to the palette. In this case the image consists of four colors, black, red, yellow and white.
thus the vectorization result contains only exactly the necessary four colors. Next, an example of an image with grayscale, which was automatically loaded in the drawing image mode. The thresholds for the black and white can be set individually using the sliders. If a vector file in black and white is required, this mode is useful, because it can be used to assign exactly the corresponding gray tones in the image to black or white. But with this image, it makes sense to switch to the sketch image mode, because this vectorizes the image in grayscale. Finally, here is an image where only a section is to be vectorized. For this, the crop function is available. Here, a rectangular section of the image can be selected with the mouse, and only this section will be vectorized. The function can be especially helpful if an image consists of several independent parts, which could make a common vectorization difficult due to the limitation to a maximum of 32 colors. For example, some parts of the image could be vectorized optimally in grayscale, others in color. Also, these could be vectorized independently with different vectorization parameters and later reassembled in an external vector editing program. That's all for today. Subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.